Good evening. My name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our PM service for Sunday, March the 31st. This is Easter Sunday. We will sing a few songs. We will observe the Lord's Supper. And I have a message that I hope will be enlightening and beneficial. Here at Northfield, we sing from the songbook, Songs of Faith and Praise. I'll give you the number and the name of the song. If you don't happen to have that book, maybe you can Google it, or if you have a different book, you can find it, so that perhaps you can sing along with us. Uh, the uh, theme this evening is song and prayer, and so there are a couple of songs about singing and one about prayer. Uh, the first song is number 747, it is entitled, Sing On, Ye Joyful Pilgrims. <clears throat> sing On, Ye Joyful Pilgrims. There are three verses. We will sing the first three verses, and then we will sing the chorus one time. All right, we'll sing uh, the three verses, and then the chorus at the end. <clears throat> Sing on, ye joyful pilgrims, nor think the moments long. My faith is heavenward rising with every tuneful song. Lo, on the mount of blessing, the glorious mount I stand. And looking over Jordan, I see the promised land. Sing on, O joyful pilgrims, while here on earth we stay. My songs of home and Jesus Beguile each bleeding day. Sing on the grand old story of resuming love. The everlasting chorus that fills the realms above. Sing on, moon joyful pilgrims, the time will not be long, till in our Father's kingdom we swell a nobler song, where those we love are waiting to greet us on the shore will meet me on the river where surges roll no more sing on a blissful music with every note you raise my Filled with rapture, my soul is lost in praise. Sing on blissful, blissful music with every note you raise. My heart 
is filled with rapture. My soul is lost in praise. We'll sing number 543. 543, Wonderful Words of Life. Wonderful Words of Life, 543. <clears throat> Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Christ the Blessed One gives to all wonderful words of life. Sinner, listen to the loving call, wonderful words of life. All so freely given, wooing us to heaven. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sweetly echo the gospel call, wonderful words of life. Offer pardon and peace to all, wonderful words of life. Jesus, freely Savior, sanctify forever. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Before we partake of the Lord's Supper, we'll sing number 335, 335, by Christ uh, in memory of the Savior's love. 335, in memory of the Savior's love. <clears throat> in memory of the Savior's love, we keep the sacred peace where every humble contrite heart is made a welcome guest by faith we take the bread of life with which our souls are fed the cup in token of his blood that was for sinners shed. Beneath his banner thus we sing the wonders of his love. And hear and dissipate by faith the heavenly feast of We come to this part of the service where we observe the Lord's Supper. We do this as the song is entitled, In Memory of the Savior's Love. Because God loved us so much, he sent Jesus to us. Uh, Jesus, the master teacher, uh, Jesus, the high priest and mediator for us, uh, gave his all to us. And finally, he offered himself up as a sacrifice one time for all, that all who accept that sacrifice and recognize it each Lord's day when we partake of the Lord's Supper will come to understand how great that sacrifice was. Help us. Uh, we just hope that uh, we will uh, keep this fresh in our minds daily, uh, especially on this particular Sunday where 
uh, the world turns to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection could not have happened had not Jesus given up his life. He was nailed to the cross. It, the blood flowed from his body. With that, uh, let's pray for the bread, the symbol of his broken body. Our God and Heavenly Father, we just are so thankful that uh, in your infinite wisdom that you set all of this in order, that the sacrifice of bulls and goats would no longer be viable because Jesus would make the one time and perfect sacrifice. As we partake of the bread, uh, help us to remember his body in agony nailed to the cross. We ask this in his most holy name. Amen. <laughs> Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. We're so thankful that Jesus was willing to shed his innocent blood. We know that that life-giving blood, uh, we know what it means to our bodies as human organisms. And for Jesus, that blood was so special because it was the blood of the new covenant. It was the blood that washes away our sins. So as we partake, Help us to remember that sacrifice. Help us to remember the blood that was shed. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Having completed the Lord's Supper, we also remember that on the first day of the week, we are supposed to lay by in store. That laying by in store uh, consists of giving back to the Lord that which we have prospered. Help us uh, to remember how prosperous we indeed are. Help us each Lord's day to allocate the amount of money that we're going to give back to you give back to the church here on earth that it can fulfill its mission. Let's pray for the contribution. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to give with a cheerful heart. Help us to indeed give as we have prospered. Help us, moreover, to give sacrificially, knowing that as we give, it has to really come from the heart there has to be a sacrifice on our part in our giving. Help us to do so, remembering that it is only through the money that we give that uh, your kingdom here on earth, the church, can fulfill its mission to seek and save the lost and to help those that are in need. Bless us as we give. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. I told you the lesson tonight is about song and prayer. And so the, the song that we're going to sing, we sing, we have sung a couple of songs about singing. Now we're going to sing a one about prayer. If you will turn your song books to number 777, the title of this song is Father, Hear the Prayer We Offer. Father, Hear the Prayer We Offer. Let's sing verses one, two, and four. One, two, and four. <clears throat> Father, hear the prayer we offer, nor for ease that prayer shall be, but for strength that we may ever live our lives courageously not forever by still waters would we idly quiet stay 
but would smite the living fountains from the rocks along our way. Meet our path be bright or dreary, storm or sunshine be our share. May our souls in hopes unweary make thy work our ceaseless prayer. I hope you enjoyed singing together with us, and I know that the Lord was praised. I know that I was uplifted in the song, and I pray that uh, the Lord accepted it in the vein in which we gave it to praise him, our true and living God. As I announced this morning at services, uh, this is a continuation of uh, a series of lessons about our life together as a church. This evening, it's going to center on the place of prayer and song in our service to the Lord in our life together. First, I would like us to take a look at the fellowship that we have, both in prayer and in song. It can be illustrated as we look back at the early church in Acts chapter 4, uh, verses 18 to 20, verses 20 to 24, and 29 to 13. They were quick to enjoin themselves in prayer. They were instructed that prayer was the vehicle through which they could let their requests be known of God, that they could communicate with their God. And uh, they did it uh, sometimes, unfortunately, in the face of persecution, as we find in Acts 12, 1 to 3, verses 5 and 12. It was through that persecution that the church grew. It grew because even though they were persecuted, they continued to uh, fellowship with the Lord in prayer. And the fellowship even uh, lent to singing. We know in Acts chapter 16 uh, that Paul and Silas were imprisoned in Philippi. And after they had been beaten, uh, instead of sulking, Instead of saying, woe is me, we know that Paul and Silas sang and prayed. This so impressed the Philippian jailer that he and his family were converted to the Lord. And so we might notice here the connection between song and prayer. Why such a fellowship? Well, because there's a value in both of them. There's an obvious value in prayer, and there is an obvious, obviously value. I'm sorry, let me get that straight. There is an obvious value in collective prayer when we gather together. Because remember, uh, the, the series that I'm delivering is our life together. When someone stands up in prayer, prays in our church assembly, Let's try to make that prayer our prayer. Let's listen to the words, even though they're not being uttered uh, from our mouths, but they are being uttered on our behalf. But there is a, a special, a special value in collective prayer. Uh, that's what uh, we understand. And we come to understand the strength that we have and the peace that we have in that prayer. Some of my favorite verses in the Bible are from the book of Philippians. And we know that uh, in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, it talks about how we can free ourselves from anxiety. And it says we do this by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, that we let our requests be known to God. And through those requests, uh, God understands uh, us. He understands our needs and our requests. And then he says, through the Holy Spirit-inspired pen of the Apostle Paul, 
that uh, we will find peace, the peace that is behind, beyond comprehension. Jesus taught the a value of collective prayer in Matthew chapter 18, verses 19 to 20. And in the epistle of James, James also taught the value of prayer. And uh, I find this especially interesting and thought provoking in James chapter five, verses 16, where he says, the prayer of a righteous man is rich and powerful. And so as, as righteous people, as people that are attempting to be righteous in their lives, we should know that the Holy Spirit inspired words uh, mean that uh, our prayers are rich and powerful. It's not like watching on TV when TV commentators say our thoughts and prayers are with you. With you. Uh, they might mean that. But we know as Christians that we mean it. It's part of our Christian life. With that, there is a value also in singing to the Lord. And singing is also an appropriate way of communicating with God. It's why I lump these two together. We communicate with God through song and prayer. In James chapter 5, verse 13, he lets us know this, this is kind of a, an individual expression of praise. And then when it's done together in the assembly, uh, it becomes so much more powerful in our life together as we pray together and moreover, as we sing together, we lift our collective voices to the Lord in mutual admonition, uh, in psalms, songs, and and spiritual uh, uh, hymns, as it says in Colossians three sixteen, and and we can see how those things act actually take to nurturing uh, us and nurturing our heart in thankfulness to the Lord. And according to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 and 19, it can allow us to be filled with the Spirit. And so the early church, which we are supposed to emulate, uh, took full advantage of the blessings that are found in prayer and songs. They, did, they not only prayed and sang as individuals, they, but they sang collectively. And this could not help but strengthen their fellowship as that they enjoyed in Jesus Christ. And so let's look at, let's fast forward to uh, 2024 and uh, understand that uh, our church today must have that within it. How do we use song and prayer to build fellowship? Now, don't get me wrong, we're to have private devotion. My personal communication with the Lord is done in prayer. And I can also sing to the Lord on my own. And we can believe in the power that is in prayer. Because according to the psalmist, in Psalm 65 and verse 2, we are confident that God hears our prayers and he has the power to answer our prayers. And for those uh, who look to God in prayer, uh, will find that hope that uh, the Lord will answer and prompting us to pray even more. That's what the psalmist says in Psalm 116, verses 1 and 2. King David, who wrote many of the psalms, uh, did this, and he learned the joy in singing praise to the Lord. And in Psalm 147, verse 1, it says that he found uh, it both to be pleasant and beautiful. Uh, I don't know about you, but when I sing together with my brothers and sisters in the assembly, 
I'm lifted up. I'm lifted up because we are all lifting our voices to the Lord collectively. And uh, we, the more we experience this, uh, the more we come to understand how important public devotion is. Because after all, the kingdom of God on the earth, the church, is our life together. Second, we sing and we pray together. And indeed, part of it is to expend some of our energies when when we listen to the prayers, and I, I mentioned this before, but, but it's so important that it's worth repeating. When someone prays and they're praying in the assembly, they're praying on behalf of the church. We must listen attentively so that we can make those prayers our prayers. Maybe afterwards we can silently pray, pray even echoing some of the sentiments that were offered in the public prayer itself. Uh, along with that, and since I'm, I'm fusing song and prayer together, as we sing, uh, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 19 says, we are making melody in our heart. And so the New Testament worship involves two things with song. It involves the spiritual part of the song and the physical side of the song. And please, and, and this is so very important, we're not professional singers. We, we do the best we can to sing, but the Lord wants us to hear uh, he wants to hear our voices singing praise to him. I know that my mom in her later years, uh, just her vocal cords didn't work the way they once did. And when she sang, it was, it was almost a croaking sound. But <laughs> it reassured me that she was reading the words and she was making melody in her heart. And so no matter how it sounded, it was singing praise to the Lord. Remember also um, how we, how our countenance is when we pray and when we sing. When we sing, we should sing with enthusiasm. We should sing as if the song is coming from our heart. I know the words are in a book, but we need to make those words of song our words. They are our words of song. And just, and I will, I'll compare it and I, I get, I get uh, confronted with this all the time. Uh, why are stadiums filled with fans watching a sporting event? They could just as easy, easy be at home, watching it on TV, having the popcorn or whatever, and watching the game on TV. Yet thousands and thousands of people attend games. What? Why do they do that? Well, it's my contention that when they're in the ballpark, when they're in the arena, they feel like they are a part of the event. Does, does that make sense to you? They, they feel like they're a part of it because they are there with other people who want to be there and they are there with those players or performers. And that's the way it ought to be with us as far as attending our church services is concerned. We are there with our brothers and sisters in the Lord. We are praying to the Lord. We are singing praises to the Lord. We get so much more out of it when we're there. I, I, I'm convinced that that's why 
the Holy Spirit inspired the Hebrew writer to write Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25. Verse 25 is that special uh, uh, verse in the Bible that says that we shouldn't forsake the assembly as some do. But verse 24 is so important because it says, uh, when we do, let us look how that we can love and encourage one another. And, you know, just as in the ballpark, we are yelling and shouting with all those people. In the church, we are singing and praying with all those people, helping them to love and to encourage. As we complete this lesson, let's look at the words in the epistle of James, in James chapter 5, verse 13. He says, is anyone among you suffering? You ready? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. James puts both of those together in perfect perspective. The suffering one should pray. The cheerful one should sing praises. Now, while we can certainly do this on our own, no one stops us from doing this on our own. God does not intend for this to always be the case. Consider that those words of, of James, I would uh, consider the words of the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 12, verse 15, to be so important to us, where it says, Rejoice with those that rejoice and weep with those that weep. This is part of our life together, which is what this series of lessons is all about. The fellowship Christ intended for his church to really enjoy involves sharing together. And one of the ways that we share together is in song and in prayer that we offer to God. To ignore either one of those is to not fully appreciate the part of our life together. It's robbing part of that life together when we don't appreciate and get involved with the song and with the prayer because we are with the family of God. And that's so very, very, very important. With that, I ask you the question as to whether you are in the family of God this evening. When we are in the family of God, we can truly appreciate praying and singing even more. The Bible is pretty succinct in how we become a member of the family. After hearing and believing the word, we are to repent of our former life. We are to confess Jesus as the Son of God and to be baptized for the remission of our sins. If you have that need, please contact us if, if it's a need of immediacy or if it's just needing to study. Please get in contact with us. We're so willing to be involved with you in that respect. Let's close with a prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that you give us the avenue of prayer. We're so thankful that you give us the avenue of song in our life together, that we uh, not only sing privately and pray privately, that corporately as a, as a church, as your kingdom here on earth, that we lift our voices in song, that we are resolute in our prayer, knowing that the prayers of righteous people are so valuable, know that, knowing that we are to sing from the heart praises to our God. Bless us in, in these two avenues of our worship. Help us to see their importance and help us to make them an integral part of each of our lives. 
continue to be with us this evening. Help us to look forward to the time that we get to meet again. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all. God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God.